Winter winds approach. Come sit with me by the fire. Talk stories of love. Yeah. Nothing like that on a cold winter night, huh? I Ching for the week of December 12th, 2016. Number 10, Lou, mating with the tiger. Above is Kian Gan. Energy and spirit power. Below is Beast. Open, easy, and responsive. Yeah. Wisdom. The heavens are sounding. Slow down so you can hear. Between each step, feel the pause. In that pause, life resides. Mm. Boy, I take the time, man. As you're walking the road, they say, take the time to smell the roses. Boy, that's so true. You know, it's just let your eyes open up to the colors that you just take for granted. And the fragrances and the people you take for granted. You've traveled far and your path has led you to a tipping point on your path to higher consciousness. Your wish for union and with the divine is here. And this is good and it's well-timed. You see, your path has led you to this place. This place that is the desire to enter the tiger's cave, which is where it's said that man mates with the spirit tiger. This mating is an acceleration in the quest. Your spirit thus far has often seemed like you've been on a difficult trek up the mountain, seeking a path that would lead to higher states of being. On this trek, you face dangers, disappointments, and doubts like life. Even with these challenges, you've been making small, and they seemed almost unnoticeable accomplishments along the way. The benefit now is being told in this hexagram. It is that these small accomplishments have led you to this point. You've come to a place of honor where you're asked to make an offering at the altar of the greater good. If your offering is correct and your approach is with dignity and humility, you will be made whole and can mate with spirit. If your steps are too fast, ill-considered, and you're rude or brash and do not adhere to the traditional ways of good behavior and honoring, You're going to go up to this place and the tiger in the cave will not be a holy, beneficent guide to higher consciousness. It'll be a fierce guardian of spirit. And this this guardian of spirit will spit you out. You'll be pushed out of the cave and roll down the mountain back to the beginning of your journey. No, well, this aspect of the tiger is very dangerous. With keen awareness, you realize you've come to a crossroads where you're being asked to choose One of two pathways. One path is hidden in shadow. Beyond the shadow, the path seems clear and has promises of abundance and enticing promises of satisfaction. The other path is clear and leads to a steep, challenging road. However, it promises nothing and contains no glimpse of success or conquest. This path, though bright and clear, is difficult and fraught with many challenges and is up a steep, steep mountainside. Now, it's been rumored that this is the way to the cave where the spirit tiger resides. Here now, your benefit will be to tame the ego and be clear in your desires. For this is a ritual journey that seems, though you've never been here before, it seems to be familiar. It's that deja vu feeling. Intercourse, spiritually, sexually, and in commerce must be treated with honor and great care. These things are sacred. And it's here that you face a great choice. You've chosen a path before in your life, and you've done well. You made it this far. But this time, much more is at stake. And if you follow the shadow path, as your ego would prompt you to do, you may make it to your goal unscathed on the outside. Unscathed is a way that you'll be seen by others when they will praise and they will honor you. While on the inner plane, you will not allow yourself to go into the mating cave and you will have made gains but you're going to feel empty and unable to connect with your spirit force that's the force of joy and love that's the path to the divine your companions on this journey are of utmost importance where you cannot do this alone choose well 
hold your companions close. This is not the time to try to lift people up to your level. It doesn't matter if it's in business or socially or in relationships. Certainly be kind and loving and compassionate, but be cautious as to who's rolling with you at this very important juncture on your path. Giving your power away at this time would be disastrous. Boy, you know what happens, man. In relationships, you give your power away and thinking that that's going to make things good. All it does is make things watery. And then they turn toxic. That's not the time for that. This is a time of great importance. And on this path, it's important you travel with people of like desires, your fellow pilgrims, where you have the goals together for the greater good of all. For us as individuals and for us as children of Gaia and children of God, we must demonstrate to her nature the respect and care that is her due. This will bring light to the path and will please spirit and the ancestors who were always there as guides and angels. The tiger on your path also sees this and with proper mating will protect you and will not bring harm to you, to your relationships, to your family or to your tribe. Relationships can be difficult at this time. Nurture these relationships with loving care, with fierce honesty, and with great dignity. Do not stoop to petty arguments that spin and spin and go nowhere. You know how it should look, and you know how it should feel, and you can make it that way. This is in your power now to do this. Become the loving heart and the soulful companion to friends and associates and lovers. And it's in this way, you'll find what you've been looking and hoping for. Actions that feed the best in others and in yourself. Clear. It's important now during the process of personal growth and your desire for change for the greater good that you treat others who come through your life, no matter what position or attitude they may hold, with compassion and kindness. It's vital to understand that the way you are in the world is your soul's reflection. If your interactions with others are tinged with mean-spiritedness, disrespect, or harshness, that negativity will stick like glue to your energy field. It'll be an energetic dark fog that can be felt by all you interact with, be it family members, friends, associates, or strangers. This energy repels the good and attracts more of its own kind of negativity. In short, you will attract exactly what you project. Should you have a buildup of negativity held in place by improper conduct, this will become this. In this, you will become blinded to your true path. Your path of living your truth. In essence, these words are saying that if you're not fully aware as you conduct your daily lives, and have your head in the clouds, you'll be part of this negative wholeness that's eating away at the world's peoples. Now, we say that the ideal person has their head in the clouds and feet on the ground, but if you just have your head in the clouds, you're going to be adding to the mess that's happening on earth and around us. But by being aware and showing kindness to your companions and showing love, you'll be protected. You'll be supported and you'll be loved as you move into a space of satisfactory conclusion. This action that begins with you will spread as a beacon of light to all of Earth's peoples. And your actions will bring hope to others who are trapped in darkness. What wonderful things we can do by living a good life and in living our good life in proper ways and in proper measure. That we are a beacon of light. We don't have to say a thing just by doing the right thing, living well. Others see us and emulate what we're doing just as we see goodness in people and we have mentors and guides, whether they know us or we know them or not. But if we emulate them, then we become better people. The simple good manners that should have been learned as young people, such as the words, please, excuse me, And thank you, carry a lot of weight as we move through our days, as does the respect for all peoples, whether they're different from you or in a different strata of society. Look scrupulously to your inner conduct. If you feel jealousy, or you find that you're greedy, or you have envy in your thoughts, do your best to become aware of these mental projections. Correct the words, correct it, let it go. 
including the feelings of guilt that may have arisen from having had these bad thoughts, right? Jealousy breeds more jealousy. Judgment breeds more judgment. Just as kindness breeds more kindness. And love brings love. The words you think are so much more powerful than the words that you say. Hear your inner negative thoughts and change them on the spot. This action, as simple as it seems, has an enormous impact and will feed you as you proceed on the road less traveled to a more clear and satisfying state of being. It is the magic of good manners and proper conduct that can open the doors to love, to health, to abundance. This kind of correct behavior will bring joy to you and to those around you. Joy nourishes creativity. By joining joy and creativity, this brings us deeply felt satisfaction that is a healing balm to the heart and to the soul, opening the doorway to prosperity in all things. If you love, speak of love. If you're grateful, speak words of gratitude. If you are in need, ask for assistance with grace and no expectations. This week, make kindness, compassion, and good manners a major part of your practice. When you do, you will reap swift results. And never forget, man, we're all on this boat together, right? We're not, we're not alone. We're on this ride, and let's do it together. We're not standing alone. Uh, we're coming to so many turning points in the world as we come to the end of this 2016, and many say it was a bad year, but I don't know. Through all of it, we learn and we come into ourselves, come into our being, come into our wholeness, come into our oneness. When you hear me say at the end of these readings, I say to be love and to teach peace. I mean, take it literally. Just be the love you want and teach peace, you know, talk about it. And Make sure your life is peaceful. It's no good talking about bringing great ecology or peace to the planet, man, if you're, you know, flushing your plastic down the toilet or something like that, you know? You gotta live it, you know? You gotta, you gotta walk your talk. And in that, we make so many changes for the better. You know, haikus are usually seasonal. It's a tradition. So listen to this about winter winds approach. Come sit with me by the fire, talk stories of love. Huh? You know who I'm talking to. Huh? <laughs> Go into this week with love and kindness and gratitude. Count your blessings. It's a real thing. Be the leader in your community with love with kindness and dignity. And above all, have compassion for yourself and for all living things. In la kesha la kin. I am the other you. And I like it that way. Namaste, my brothers. Namaste, my sisters. Find love, be peace, and have a rockin' good time. Hugs to all.